So there we have it, uh, game one, Mexico nil, Poland nil. I'm Aldaman86 and welcome back to the channel. We're going to be talking about Mexico's first game of the World Cup in Qatar 2022. And what a game. Um, obviously, people that had, didn't watch the game and saw a nil nil, they would probably assume that it was a boring game. But it was anything but. Um, it was a very entertaining game, a very stressful game. Um, I was actually at work watching it and it was a... Uh, Hectic, trying not to swear, <laughs> trying not to shout. Um, but yeah, no, it was, it was a really good game. Um, I thought Mexico did a lot better than I think a lot of people gave, um, gave them credit before, before the game. Uh, I think a lot of people thought that Poland were going to win this fairly easily. And they came close to, I tell you. Um, so, first half was fairly alright. Um, I got the line up here, you know, you can see it in the reflection of my glasses. Obviously, a Chora in goal, Gallardo on the left, Moreno, Montez, Jorge Sanchez on the right, Herrera, Alvarez, Chavez uh, in the midfield, and then Lozano, Martin, and Vega out on out front. So, um, yeah, so get straight into it. Ochoa, something happens to this guy when it's the World Cup. He's been, he's been all right ish. For Club America, um, but mate, the guy comes alive at World Cups and he proved it today. He had a really good game. I'll, I'll get into why in, in a bit. Um, Jesus Gallardo absolutely impressed me today. I think he had one of, if not his best games for Mexico. Um, really good for me. Cemented his place, yeah, at left back for the Argentina game. Um, did really, did I mean, defensively, was really well. Um, well rounded, but attacking wise, he was a little bit off. Um, he had a couple of times, especially in the first half, where he tried to get into the box, he tried to, you know, knock in the dis distribution up front was a bit poor. Uh, crossing it in, and just hoping for the best. Um, Martin really didn't have he didn't have a bad game, he didn't have a good game, he just kind of ghosted it, basically, in my, from, in my opinion. Um, he didn't play terribly. He was where he needed to be, but you know, Martin's the kind of guy that you give the ball to him and he shoots and he scores and he didn't able to wasn't able to do that. But um yeah, Gallardo really impressed me. Moreno um had a good game ish until he gave away the penalty. Um it was for me it was definitely a penalty. Um uh, just a stupid thing to do. Um but I think he brought Novan Dusk down the box if I'm not mistaken. Um and goes into the thing about Ochoa being so good. I mean, he saves a penalty from Lewandowski. As soon as the penalty was given, I turned to my team leader and I said, Poland are going to be 1-0 up now because Ochoa is terrible at goalkeeping. Uh, terrible at goalkeeping, what am I saying? He's terrible at penalties. Um, I said, bro, I don't, think he's, I don't think I've ever seen him save a penalty. Um, unless it was in the 2014 World Cup. But anyway, I said, oh, Dave, bro, they've scored this because he's terrible at penalties. And he goes and saves it. It's a really good save. And people, a couple of people, not many, but a couple of people saying that it was a poor penalty from Lewandowski. It was not. It was a good penalty. Uh, it was in the right hand, low right hand. A child just got down to it. And it was a really good save. Um, Montez did all right. Jorge Sanchez had a terrible first 35, 40 minutes. Um, got his enough yellow cards. Um, just seemed out of his depth. You could tell that it was his first World Cup game, and you could tell that he's still fairly young. I mean, there's a couple of uh, there's that. I'm not gonna mention what their Twitter is because I just don't want to give them any kind of publicity. But the the Ajax um, fan Twitter page, everyone knows who I'm talking about. So reactionary. He's already just hates. Jorge Sanchez with a passion. Uh, some Mexicans as well, even some of Club American fans just don't rate him. I think that Kevin Alvarez is better. I think there's, you know, Julian Araujo could be better um, once he hits his ceiling. Um, I, I like Jorge Sanchez, and I think for me, he's at the best club, one of the best clubs in terms of improving players. You saw it with Edson Alvarez. Edson Alvarez was great. He's always been great. He was great in 2018, but he was very raw in 2018. You can tell that he still had a lot of developing to do. Even when he left Club America and he went to Ajax, he struggled for a long time. And now he's one of their best players. And 
they've renewed his contract and everything. So even though I think it's likely that he's going to make his big move, uh, he very, very nearly went to Chelsea, which I would have had very strong mixed feelings about. But um, yeah, like Jorge Sanchez is going to take time for him, in my opinion. I think it's going to take time. He did have a good second half. He did definitely grew into the game. I think that's mainly because Mexico got really confident, and especially the 10 minutes or so after the penalty save, Mexico dominated that 10 minutes, 15 minutes or so. For me, should have scored, um, come close to. Um, but yes, Juan Sanchez, I reckon this, this first 11 starts against Argentina, maybe someone else instead of Martin plays, maybe him and it's his first start. Um, We'll have to wait and see. We'll get onto the strikes in a minute. But Herrera, I think, had an okay game. Herrera, for me, is he's a really good passer of the ball, but he's not very, he's not as strong as he used to be. He's not as fast as he used to be. He's not as quick as he used to be. Um, and it shows, but he's got a really good pass on him, especially when that amazing pass that set Alexis Vega free against um, Sweden a couple of weeks ago. Um, He's he in, in the, he had an alright game. Edson Alvarez had been, I think, had a really good game as well. Um, Chavez had a really good game as well. I wasn't really expecting much from him, but he had a really good game. And the midfield was pretty good. The defense was pretty good. Apart from giving away the penalty, the defense was pretty good and, and nullified Lewandowski. Um, which you know, I always said, if you nullify Lewandowski, then I don't think the rest of Poland's much of a threat. Having said that, Chesney and Goal had a, one of his best games I've ever seen. Like, he was amazing. Both goalkeepers in this game were awesome. Um, and it goes straight into the forward. So, like I said, Martin didn't have a bad game. I don't think he played terribly. I just, he went under the radar a lot. Didn't do anything, really. Uh, got into a couple of decent positions, but Martin, for me, is not the kind of person that gets on the end of crosses or long balls. He likes to have it played to him, play the free, and he likes to run around with the ball. And just they just didn't offer that to him, so I felt bad for him. But Raul Jimenez came on for me. Jimenez, it was good to see him come on for a start, but I think he was used wrongly. I think Tata Martino just said, "Look, stay up top, get on the end of crosses." And, you know, before he got injured, he was quite good at getting on the end of crosses, but. But what makes Jimenez so brilliant is, and what we found out when he was having his really good spell with Wolves, was that he, he can drop deep. And he likes to get the wide players, uh, you know, Adama Traore, and um, I can't remember, I think it was Neto, somebody else, um, there was another Wolves midfielder. And this, he would have done that perfectly with Tricky, and there you go. And I think that's what's going to happen in the beginning of the Argentina game. I think he's going to start. Raul Jimenez, and I think he's going to be a lot deeper, and he's going to be the one that connects with Lozano and Chucky, um, Lozano and Chucky, Chucky and Vega, because they can both cut in, and Chucky can play on the wide wings, and he can cross the ball, and Jimenez can get on the end of them, but also Jimenez can drop deep, and just set Vega free, set Chucky free, who are both pacey, and both are really good goal scorers, um, proven, and... No, I think that could work against Argentina. Um, hell, if Saudi Arabia can score two goals against Argentina, then um, so can Mexico. And I think Mexico, I think there's going to be goals in the Argentina-Mexico game. Um, hopefully, Mexico goes as well as Argentina. I feel like Messi, if if, if you don't give him a set piece, if you don't give him a penalty... You know, and it gets to the 60th, 70th minute and there's no scores. I think at that point, it's quite confident that he's probably going to score. But it's messy and you can always pop up and punish you. But um, this game is no, by no means a write-off for Mexico. And even if it is, I think uh, Mexico can beat Saudi Arabia. Um, we'll get into that a bit later on. But yeah, um, I think they had a really good game. Let's get into the stats, because the stats are just like 11 shots from Mexico, 6 for Poland, a 4 on target for Mexico, and 2 on target for Poland. And that was one of them was the penalty. So, forgetting the penalty, they had 1 shot on target, and 5 shots in total. You could say, That just tells you 61% possession for Mexico, um, 
160 odd more passes. Uh, the fouls were a bit similar. The, the thing that gets me is that Mesco did 14 fouls, Poland got 15 fouls, and Poland only got one yellow card, and Mexico got two. Poland should have got way more many play, way many more players booked in my opinion, but that is what it is. Um, so Mexico currently sit third. Um, obviously, Saudi Arabia are first, which is absolutely astounding. Um, so yeah, I think Poland and Saudi Arabia is going to be a tough game for them, and I think Mexico and Argentina are going to be a tough game for these guys. Um, this guy, this group seems to be. One of the one of the craziest groups because Saudi Arabia has proven that they're no pushovers. I thought, okay, win against Saudi Arabia, a win against Poland, and a loss against Argentina will still get Mexico through. That's gone out the window now because obviously Saudi Arabia's got three points already. Um, if they can get anything, if they get anything out of this Poland game, it's going to be really difficult then because Argentina are going to be fired up now because they've just got a shock defeat they've, they've suffered through th what three or four days worth of memes and jokes because you know it's quite funny but like i said um Di, Di maria ain't who he used to be i think if we can block out martinez latauro martinez um then i think argentina are gettable in my opinion um i don't think argentina's defense is all that anymore um, I think Saudi Arabia proved that. Um, having said that, I don't trust Mexico to. I mean, to I I want to say I don't trust Mexico to hold on to a lead, um, but they held on against Poland. Um, but Argentina is a better team than Poland is, so it's gonna be tough, and it's gonna be. I mean, I think a draw for Mexico against Argentina is a good result. A win is just beyond amazing. Um, but a draw, the draw will be all right, providing then the Mexico can go and get the win against Saudi Arabia. But if Saudi Arabia wins against Poland, which now looks possible, um, then you have to admit that Saudi Arabia is probably through. Um, I don't think that's going to happen. I think Poland's going to win against Saudi Arabia, just. Uh, which means that they'll be on four points. Saudi Arabia will be on three. If Mexico and Argentina draw, then that's decent enough for Mexico because you know, they'll be on two points. Um, I mean, uh, like I said, I'm gonna go. I can't. I don't get too into it at the moment because it can get really, really complicated. But basically, I think a draw against Argentina will be a good result. Um, haven't had really good results at all against Argentina in recent memory. I think um, a few a couple of years ago, Mexico played Argentina twice in like a week for friendlies and got battered both times. Um, if I remember rightly, I think one of them might have been a, a draw. But either way, Argentina is by far on paper the, the toughest game that Mexico is going to play in this World Cup in the group stages. Um... This game, this group could go either way, could go anywhere. Um, those three points against Argentina might be the only ones that Saudi Arabia get. So, um, we'll have to wait and see. I think there are going to be tweaks. I think Raul Jimenez does start um, against Argentina. I think the back line stays the same, despite Jorge Sanchez um, being a little bit wobbly. Hopefully, he's kind of grown into his confidence a bit now. Um, I think Chavez. Chavez in particular keeps his, his deserves to keep his spot in the midfield. Maybe Hector Herrera comes out. Maybe Godardo comes in. Um, because I think Godardo, um, I think he's a bit better on the ball, even though he's so much older than Hector Herrera is. Um, he seems to be still really good on the ball, really good passer. Um, and, you know, he knows the squad inside out. So I think, um, you know, maybe Godardo comes in. I think Herrera won't start. And I think Martin won't start. But other than that, I think that the rest of the team is going to be the same as the Poland game. Um, I want to see Jimenez start, in my opinion. I think uh, he, if he starts, he's more confident. He's got more time to drop deep and get the wingers involved. Um, 
whereas in Poland he had 10 minutes he, he was forced to stay up front and I think that's where he f failed because I think he would have liked to have just dropped deep a bit more have a bit more time to slowly build up his game but um, he was forced not to and I think that cost him but I think Argentina him that starts in my opinion um, and then probably Henry Martin comes off the bench just for an extra um, I mean, you would imagine now by if if Jimenez does start, then by about the 60th minute, Jimenez is going to be pretty tired. Bring on Henry Martin, who's fresh, who's quick, um, good with the ball, um, could cause Argentina a lot of problems. The subs in this game against Argentina is going to be key because, um, like I said, like Argentina don't have the best defence. Um, they got a good goalkeeper, they got Otamendi, but he, Otamendi is so old now, I think he's like 38 or something stupid. Um, but yeah, like I said, it was a, I, for me, I was, I mean, before the penalty, I would have been happy with the draw. And I am happy with the draw. The draw was uh, one point better than zero. And uh, for me, if Saudi Arabia had won and if Poland had won, then I would be really, really worried about Mexico because you know that Argentina is at least going to win at least one of their games, one of their two remaining games left. Um, and I don't want to have two teams on six points, Mexico on nil and Argentina on three, you know. So at the moment, the draw keeps us in it. Um, and if... Poland then get the win. I think if Poland, for me, if Mexico, obviously the best case scenario is Mexico beats Argentina, um, gets the four points, and then um, Poland and Saudi Arabia draw. Uh, because then it would be Mexico and Poland, four points. But yeah, like I said, I, I'm not going to try not to go too into it because it can go anyway. All I can say is that it was a decent game against Poland. We controlled the game. Um, like the stats prove it. Um, much better going forward. Much better, more way more possession. Um, but I don't think Poland, uh, Argentina is not going to play the way Poland did. Um, Argentina is going to be way more attacking. But that could be an advantage if the defense can hold and deal with that. Then I think it leaves options um, at the back of Argentina's defense. Um, and I think players like Chucky in particular and Vega as well could really have some fun with uh, an Argentinian team that's trying to attack um, and leaving space behind them. Um, so I think it's going to be a lot more open. Poland were very defensive, very um, negative in my opinion, very much, oh, we're bigger than them because we're European, so we're going to just kick them and kick them and push them. Um, and it didn't work, obviously, because it's they didn't win the game, so um, I, I expect Mexico and Argentina to be a lot more open, it's going to be a lot more frenetic, it's going to be a lot more fast paced, it's probably going to be a lot more goals, uh, mate, it's going to be a good game, this is going to be an amazing game, and I'm at work again for it as well, so my colleagues don't have to put up with me swearing and shouting and running around the office, I'm checking out, I don't do that, but um, yeah, let me know what you thought of the game, let me know who you thought were good players, do you think that do you disagree with me at any point? Do you think some players that I think didn't do well did well and vice versa? Let me know in the comments. And what do you think the what's your predictions for the Argentina game, which is, I think, almost two days away. So they have to tomorrow anyway, my time. Um, so, yeah, take it easy, guys. Uh, and I'll see you guys for game two in a couple of days. So wish us luck because I think Mexico are going to need it. So, yeah, take it easy, guys, and I'll see you guys very soon. Adios.